Welcome back to Yardnog Sawmill, where we are crawling under the log hauler. Ford's down again. Uh, drive shaft issues. Uh, universals are bad, or at least one towards the rear is bad. And uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the drive shaft out. Uh, let me show you what we got to do there to get it out. Now, our particular drive shaft is a single, uh, single piece drive shaft, except for the slip joint in it. It's got two universals. No carrier bearing on it at all uh, because it's a short bed extended cab. What you need to get the bolts out of it, this is a 12.12 millimeter socket. Uh, has to be a 12 point in order to fit on these. And a good size breaker bar or just a long ratchet. Uh, you're going to be a little tight for space under there for some of them. We actually have the drive shaft out already. What we did was mark the drive shaft here, the other half of the yoke here. I just I call it a yoke, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then this is also marked here and where it came off of the input shaft on the rear end there. You do the same on the other end on the output shaft. Where we let me get under here. Hold on, guys on the output shaft of the transmission. We have it marked here. We used some uh, grease marker, plus we used uh, a center, a spring-loaded center punch to put a little dent in there. And that dent matches up with, hold on, one we have right here. Pull that over right here. Now we have yellow marker on it, but there's also a little, little dent in there that says, hey, this is where this lines up. On here, we mark this flange, and we mark the yoke, we mark the drive shaft. There's a little punch mark here, a little punch mark here, again a punch mark here, and a punch mark on the output shaft of the transmission. As you can see, this just has a slip joint, universal here, and a universal on the other end. Okay, what we're looking for here, guys, in this case, right here, the needle bearings inside this cap are no good. They failed, and you've got side to side moving. This little bit of movement translates into a nice vibration or a nasty vibration up into the whole truck. The whole truck, you can feel it vibrating. So what you're going to do here, what we're going to do here, guys, sorry, we're all cramped in here. Uh, we're going to replace both U-joints. The other one doesn't show that it's bad, but you're under here, drive shafts out, put two good ones in, you know you're solid. Got the drive shaft out here in the shop. What we did was make up this fixture. Let's take a look. Nice piece of white oak under here. I happen to have a block out in the wood stack. Got these two little blocks on the side to support here. They're just thick enough to get underneath of here. Underneath, on the, on the course on the bottom, you have the support of the white oak piece. And the hole is drilled in there. That gives a place for the bearing to go when you drive it out. All right. Now, before we go any further, we have to move the clips that hold in that hold in the uh, the caps. These are outer clips. There's inner and outer clips for these. These are outer clips. When you're looking up your, yeah, pop right out, nice. When you're looking up your drive shaft U joints, you, uh, one of the questions it'll ask is inner or outer clips. Inner clips go right in here to hold the cap in. So. Some can get a little tricky, they get stuck in there. Let's have a pick here, handy. Pry it up out of the groove when you squeeze it together. There you go, pops right out. I have to admit, so far, everything has gone fairly well taking this out. Actually, the bolts were scary loose on this. The, the bolts uh, bolting it up to the flanges. Wow, let me see. And the old set is greasable. The new set is greasable. Yeah, that's not going to work. See what else we can get. 
Okay, one other way you could do these. Wow, that bearing looks like it's, there we go. Tap on that. That was easy enough. Just get that started there. Pry it up. And go, that one's out. You notice two different shaped clips here. This one will go on the grease side. I think the, the new one's exactly the same. Might even be the same manufacturer. I don't I don't know if stock ones on here were greasable or not. There we go. And that's it. Now, what you want to make sure you do when you do this is take the flange off first. Take this off first. Don't drive this out because then you've got to drive these out trying to hold this little piece still as it is now. Wow, you can see that one's stiff. A little too stiff. Now get that set right over the hole. You don't want to be trying to drive that thing through a solid piece of white oak. Now the challenge with this. Let's see how loose these are. In my case, I've got some of these tools back. An old socket. This one is a 21 millimeter. Little extension. You want one that fits in there fairly tight. You want to get as close to the edges of the bearing as you can. And just start knocking it down. Drive it out the other side. Pull the cap off the other side and you should be able to slide the whole thing out then. These can be stubborn. That one's moving already. Let's make sure we're going into the hole. Like I said, you don't want to try to drive this thing down through the wood. The hole's your clearance down there. Yeah, it's moving. That thing is falling off the shelves here. Yep, starting to move out the other side. Wow. The whole cap came off the other bearing. <laughs> You can see that this busted out the other side. That must be frozen in there, guys. It's going to be a little more interesting than I thought. We'll drive this down through. Get that cap off. Should be able to pull this back through the other way, or we'll just flip it over and drive it down through. That's not good at all. That cap was shot. I think we got to these just in time, guys. Could be interesting. Let's keep going. You know what else I should do? Safety glasses on. And now it's coming out. Okay, that's out. Wow, that whole needle cage and everything fell apart in there. Line that up. And I can bang on this, won't matter. With what though? If I had a piece of steel, it would be nice, but I don't. Nope. What you don't want to do is hit this. There we go, that's far enough. All right, <laughs> well, I got that off. Move this one over to the vise. It's gonna be a little tougher to keep still because it's just gonna to wanna to bounce around on the vise. And just drive it straight through. Let's do that. And it's moving back and forth, so it should move easy enough. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's 
it. Sorry, guys. Totally missed driving that one out. Yeah, I got this one most of the way out. Right there, you can see it's driven up against the inside. I can't drive it any further, so I'm just going to get the vice grips, pull that off. That should be clear, and we'll drive it back through the other way and pull the other one off. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and grab it with the vice grips. It's loose, just got to get it out of there. Oh, I could have probably pulled that up by hand. <laughs> All right, get it back over the other way. Knock this down the other way. Don't hit the drive shaft. Oh, that's out. Okay. I'm just taking a wire brush, brass brush I use. It's definitely softer than what we're uh, working with here. And clean out the grooves where your rings sit in. I mean, you could clean the parts generally, just get all of this, you know, go ahead and scrub this whole thing down if you want. Probably a good idea to clean these down a bit because you, anytime you're driving those, if you're going to be driving the uh, new bearings back in, this dirt has an opportunity to fall into the bearing. And uh, contaminate it and end up screwing it up. All right, for the U-joints, guys, we went with the Moog 295 Super Strength. I know that uh, a lot of guys would want to go with the Spicer. I like Spicer. My front the universals on my axles, front axles are Spicer. My hubs are Spicer. Um, yeah, but this is available now. The Spicer, considering everything that's going on right now, is three weeks out. I don't have three weeks worth of downtime. These last me five years rather than 10. I'm happy. <laughs> I'll get five years out of these and swap them out in five years. That's a long ways down the road. And uh, these will be solid enough. I'll put a link for these down in the description. And I'll, I also know the Spicer number for, for these. I'll put the Spicer number down in the description as well. Both will be greasable. Um, I like the greasable. It gives me an option. You get contaminants in it. You can grease it and push the contaminants out. Yeah. There we go. There's your grease fitting in there. These take the, take the needle grease zerk. Keeps it a lower profile. It's not going to get snagged on things if you happen to be in the brush. Back in the bush, running around in the woods, you're not going to shear off your, uh, your grease fitting. I think we're going to try this a slightly different way. I think we may put this, uh, I think we may put this in with a clamp rather than beating them in with a hammer. The hammer works, but I have big enough C-clamp. Should be able to clamp those in and get it done. All right. You go ahead and pull two of your caps off. Slide it one in this end, one in the other end. And your biggest problem with these is keeping the needle bearings intact. With the meth method we're going to use, we're going to use a clamp to push these together. You want to make sure that when you bring this in, you're not missing this post and driving it in and bending all your uh, pins or breaking all your pins off or whatever. They're held in there with the grease. They do, they do a good job of staying in place. 
but you definitely don't want any falling out. Our clamp is going to be a C clamp. Oh, perfect. I think this is going to work out really nice. Get this one started here. You want them to go in square, not crooked. Slide it over the other side a little bit. There we go. Just want to slowly close the clamp. Going in nice and flat on both sides. Make sure you're lined up with your pins. That looks good. I think we got both sides started a little bit. That's it. See, clamp's working good. Now, don't drive these home, guys. Just tap it in. They went in real easy with the clamp. Just want to get just below where your C-clip goes. Now, the Moogs come with a little baggie of clips in your grease fitting. Let's pull them out. Okay, you got your four clips. And remember one of these, this one here, is going to be different. That's the one that goes on the grease zerk side. You got your needle zerk right here. Barely see that. Needle zerk right there. And then your other four other three clips look like this. Let's go now this side. This is not our zerk, so we can take one of our regular clips. Line that up. Now if you really want it to get technical, if one edge is sharper than the other, put that edge up. Give it a squeeze. Push it down in. That's it. It's in there. Flip it over. Do the same on this side. Just tapping it in lightly. Wow, these are nice. These are moving right in the way we want them. There we go. This is again, this is not our Zerk side. So we can use one of our standard clips. Do a little squeeze. Push it down in. You want to hear that click. Now, just to make sure, because this is exact exacting fit across here. A little tap. That's seated against the other side. I'm going to tap this to make sure it's back in the groove. I clean the grooves out on these. So Got our first one in. Went real smooth, guys. Real smooth. Now, again, we got this half done. Grooves all cleaned out. I'm going to go ahead and pull the caps. Check to make sure we got all of our needles in there. Go ahead and pump out a little grease. But get a nice amount on there. Keep those needles seated. Do not want them falling out. Now again, you got your marks. There you go, it's our yellow indicator there, plus we have a punch mark there and a punch mark there. These have been cleaned really well. Let's move this out a little bit. You don't really need it to be over that hole anymore. Huh, there we go.
sure none of them are falling down. In good shape there. Now this is our end with the grease zerk on it. Seeing it nicely in the groove. And flip that over. Tap this one in a bit. There we go. Just about seated. Hang on. That's got it. And our last clip. And this side should be done. Let's see. Make sure this seat's in there properly. There might be a specialty tool for this, but I don't have it. You know those pliers work just fine. All right, then now that that did not seat all the way, so let's give it a little tap. There we go. Seated it nicely. Uh, it's still stiff that way, but moving good that way. And we have a new U joint installed. Got a slip joint here, guys. With the rubber boot over it. Boot's in good shape. But uh, and it's still it's still sliding the way it should. But everything else is getting grease here, so so is this. Go ahead and snip these zip ties off without damaging the boot. There we go. Wow, that's bad. That's whew, that is just full of crust in there. Let's see what blows out of there. And of course the compressor's on now. All right. Let's go ahead and use the vise. Be able to hold this still with the vise while I pull this apart. getting there. There we go. Okay, with the second U-joint, we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process we did on the first one. Getting it all cleaned up, and getting the new U-joint installed, and getting this ready to go back into the log hauler.
All right. Again, we made sure we lined up the index marks. There's punch mark here and here, but I have the yellow on there as an extra indicator in case it's hard to see the punch marks. And then our punch mark here with again our yellow marker. All right. We clean this all out. We're going to have grease that up. Get it put back on here. Well. Now you need a good quality zip tie. We have here. Drive shaft is done. What we want to do before we get the drive shaft put up there is clean up the mating surfaces here. This is the output shaft of the trans. Just a little bit of rust on there. Get that cleaned off. Just using a piece of scotch right here to get that clean. Lighting's not the best underneath here. In fact, I think this light's about ready to fall down and hit me in the head. All right. That's smooth. No real big crusties on there. That should set up nice. It was stuck on there, actually, when I went to get it off of there, so that's a heck of a lot better. Clean this one off. I'm going to get, a, get in the seat on here real nice. This with a little brake cleaner. Get all those bolt holes cleaned out. Got a rag around here somewhere. And we'll go ahead and do the same to the output, output shaft of the transmission. Remember these were all sprayed with a PB blaster to uh, help get the bolts loose when we started this. So time to uh, Clean them up. Make sure the Loctite holds up. All right. We know we have our punch mark here. So on the bottom. I'll match that up to a, our index or punch mark on the other one. On the uh, on the drive shaft. Go ahead and get this set up. I have my lovely assistant passing me the drive shaft, which is basically rolling it up my legs, onto my stomach, and onto my chest. Right one. One for you too. Okay. Hope that lines up. There we go. All right. Let's get two set in this end. And then we'll get this drive shaft off my chest. Is this one for the front now? Yes, this one you told me you needed. You should be right there. Okay, we got the other end going up. And that bolt started, and at least I got the drive shaft off my chest. So, 
One up top is going to be the biggest bugger on the whole bunch. Oh, not bad. Start right in. What do you know? Things are lining up nice. In front again? Please. Might as well get all four in up here, snug them down. All of our index marks lined back up. Excellent. Twelve millimeter, twelve point. Now this is not socking them down. This is not uh, torquing anything, guys. This is just getting the bolts running. Spec on these is 76 foot pounds. But I can't fit my torque wrench under here that reads foot pounds. <sighs> Converted it to Newton meters. It's 103. My smaller torque wrench doesn't go that high. So we just max it out and then some. If I can get in here, here we go. <clears throat> this one's actually a little harder in the back because it's so close to the ground compared to the front one. anything I forgot because it would kind of stink if I did. Things will break. Well, it hasn't broken yet. <laughs> 10 feet out of the driveway. Now, the biggest problem we had with this is we could feel vibration, uh, pretty strong vibration um, at highway speed. Even at this speed, it's feeling better. Um, the, the truck's really starting to come around with the dried and uh, everything else. Because we're, we're getting things slowly repaired as we go along. We just did the frying with the uh, upper and lower ball joints. We have new uh, hubs and bearings in the front. Uh, what else was up there? Oh, yeah, the new, the new uh, locker hubs. They're brand new. The, the wheel hubs bearings are new but also all the seals in the front end are new and uh, the front universals are new so we've replaced every universal in the truck now with these two replacement on this drive shaft Deb, do you feel the difference yeah. I know I do
vibration. Smooth as glass, guys. This is this. We got it. Got it fixed. Back to hauling logs. to wrap this one up the log haulers back online ready to haul some logs uh, drive shaft universals kind of a pain to find the right ones for this truck i'll put the numbers down for this particular year make and model 2001 f-250 super duty 7.3 diesel with the six foot bed and uh single piece drive shaft and i'll have the correct numbers down there both uh, the moog numbers that i used and the uh spicer numbers all right, and got to get that. Um, got to get the proper needle for those uh, new grease fittings on there. I'm unfamiliar with that, but we'll get that squared away. Put the log haulers back online. And if you have any questions about this repair, guys, I mean, I'm I'm mechanical until it starts running in specialty tools, and then I'll skip over and have somebody else work on it. But uh, this was eight bolts, a couple of U joints, out back in. We're good to go. Biggest thing you got to watch out when you put the caps back on those is that the needles stay in place. Okay? The needles fall down into the bottom. You'll be able to drive them down in there, but they won't quite go all the way in. They'll be about a sixteenth of an inch short, and that's because there's a needle laying in the bottom. If you try to beat them in a submission, you'll crack the needles. You'll actually break the needles. So go ahead and uh, you know make sure that those extra grease on those needles is not going to hurt. Take your time getting them in there, and it'll be a success. Remember indicator marks where your drive shaft came apart put it back together exactly the way it came apart put your indicator marks in there uh, the, the spring-loaded center punch worked for me and a little bit of the yellow uh, yellow marker on there worked great I was able to relocate everything as it came off make sure everything stays clean all right don't get a bunch of dirt down in that in those caps they're brand new you don't want to just load them up with a bunch of dirt um, proper torque on those bolts that's important as well and use the Loctite diesels vibrate or anything on road off road I like using Loctite on the bolts um, especially the diesels <laughs> they're called a rattle trap for, for a good reason they will they will vibrate those bolts loose and like I said those bolts were not as tight as they should have been when I took that off of there I had a lot of guys had trouble getting those bolts out of there I didn't, no problem at all I barely had to use any force to break the bolts loose in fact, the one was actually loose, so that wasn't good at all. I cleaned up the threads, got the Loctite on there, blue Loctite. Some guys might want to put red on there, but that's something you're going to need heat to get apart. Blue's, blue is what's recommended. Blue is what we use. 76 foot pounds, and uh, you're good to go. All right. I'm going to wrap this one up here at the Iron Oak Sawmill. And if any of you four guys are looking at this to learn how to repair this, you got any questions about it, put it down in the comments section. Uh, I'll do my best to help you out. And uh, for all those who watch this normally for sawmill videos, we will be getting that back to that. But we need this guy right here to haul our logs so we can saw them. Okay. So, again, if you have any questions about what we're doing here at the mill or on this truck right here, put it down in the comments section. We'd be glad to help you out. And as always, thanks everybody for stopping out. We'll see you at our next time.